After six months after the release of Final Cut Pro for the iPad, I finally got around to trying it. Now leading up to installing it on my iPad, I watched plenty of YouTube videos on it. Then I decided to try it out and edit my first video during my recent trip to San Francisco. So what's the verdict? I'm now editing almost all my videos on my iPad now. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how I got here and tell you some of the challenges I've encountered on my way. Hopefully this will give you an idea of whether this is the right app for you. Let's get into it. In the beginning of 2017, I purchased Final Cut Pro for the Mac for $300. That's when I started to get into content creation and video editing. I really think I got my money's worth, especially for the piece of software that has a one-time fee and regular updates. In May of 2023, Apple finally released Final Cut Pro for the iPad as a subscription. My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. Today, I'm gonna to take you through my journey of using Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Now, this won't be a comprehensive guide through all the features of this app. There are plenty of videos out there for that. This video will be mainly in three different sections, editing, workflow, and things that are missing. Now, just to give you a little background on my editing, video editing experience, I started using iMovie back in the day. And since then, I've used Adobe Premiere, uh, Final Cut Pro, I eventually landed on. I've used iMovie and LumaFusion on my iPad. I never got into DaVinci Resolve. My project timelines tend to be very simple and I usually don't do any special effects. Editing with Final Cut Pro on the iPad has been a very seamless process. The timeline is very familiar. And even though the interface and the layout are a little bit different, things are very intuitive. You can tell that things have been made with touch in mind as well. But with that said, in my opinion, using the keyboard, a keyboard is the most efficient way of editing. Now most of the main keyboard shortcuts are there and a majority of my editing, and I think for a lot of people, involves cutting, trimming, and splicing video clips down to a good and cohesive timeline. So I'm mainly using the I and O keys a lot on my desktop and also trying it here on my iPad, which sets the start and end range of a selection. Now, if there's a section that I want to cut out, I, I set the start range, play to the end of that section, and then set the end range and delete. In order for me to do this still on the iPad, I need to be in the correct mode. Now the mode options are edge, range, and clip. So the start and end range function here only works when you're in the range mode. I wish it worked in other modes. So there are just a lot of little things like this that are quirky or missing. Another example is you can still use Command B to split a clip, but only on a single clip. Shift Command B doesn't work, which on the desktop splits all the clips at the playhead. I think this is one of those big things that's a big oversight. One more quirk or thing that isn't working correctly is how the timeline often doesn't scroll to the playhead. Now I'm not talking about while things are playing. They actually just finally solved that issue on the desktop version. I'm talking about when you move the playhead to another section of the timeline that is out of view. It doesn't scroll there. Now, for example, if I use the shortcut key to go to the beginning of a timeline, it doesn't scroll there. Only when I hit play will it scroll to that position. And when I hit play and the playhead goes off the view, it doesn't follow. But again, they just only recently added that to the uh, desktop version. Now, hopefully they can fix this issue, which I would call a bug, and also add the follow playhead option in as well. But other than these little things, editing has been very smooth, very familiar, especially coming from the desktop version. The inclusion of the jog wheel is a nice touch, especially for more precise, precise positioning on the timeline. I do love the inclusion of live drawing. I really haven't had the opportunity to use it too much. Oh, one more thing to mention is the matter of color grading. Now this is an area where I spend very little time and have very little experience. I do try to get everything as close as possible and correct as far as exposure and white balance in camera. But one thing I've been playing around is the built-in log processing on the iPad. This is something that I'm only beginning to dabble in. Now you are able to do some basic color corrections, which I do like, but for more professionals uh, who are doing more professional color grading, you might wanna look into DaVinci Resolve or go back to the desktop version of Final Cut Pro. Again, if you want a more detailed tutorial or guide on the different parts of the editor, there are plenty of videos out there already. 
Let's talk about workflow. And this is an area I've had to make the biggest adjustments and where Apple can make the biggest improvements as well. Now, when we talk about workflow, we're talking about capturing, importing, organizing, editing, and exporting. Now, I'm going to be doing an entire video on my entire YouTube workflow from beginning to end. But as it relates to Final Cut Pro, there are a few places uh, to import media from, photos and files. Now, there is something you should know as far as what happens to the files after you import it. A copy of that file is put into a project file, which means that you can delete it from the photos or files, depending on where you imported it from, and still use it in your project. It's not using the files, those files directly, but it's making a copy of it. And no, I bring this up because this brings up something that other people have been complaining about. You can't edit files right off an external SSD. When you import them from an SSD, it copies it into your project file on your iPad. Then the last way to bring media in is to record a video using the iPad's camera. Now, I think this is a very cool feature. I like how what you film goes right into your project media area. There is one feature that I wish they would add that would make my workflow even that much more streamlined. Since iPad OS 17, Apple now supports UVC capture devices, meaning the ability to use webcams or an external video source. But this is only supported for those certain apps. Final Cut Pro is not one of those supported apps. The dream is capture video from my camera using a USB capture card directly into Final Cut Pro. Basically, I'm trying to cut down on as many steps as possible. So let's talk about the project media panel. Now, once you've imported all your clips, they show up in the project media area with the thumbnails and file names. At first, I thought Apple really needs to give us the ability to create folders, but then I realized they're really pushing for keywords. We can use keywords in place of folders to organize our media. Now, this is definitely a different way of thinking, and I'm not sure if it's really that much better than having folders, but I can get used to it. Now, there are two things that I wish Apple will add in the future. First, give us a list view of all the clips and not just thumbnails. For me, I do a lot of talking head recordings in different clips and not all in one take or one big video. This means a lot of my thumbnails look exactly the same. So I rely on the file name a lot as well. Having a list view would make it easier for me to see things. Now, the last feature I wish was added is the ability to add keywords during the import process. So I often record different parts of my video in sections. For example, I usually do all my B-roll shots after I shoot the main talking head shots. And once I'm done shooting all, or at least most of my B-roll shots, I usually import them all at once. It would be nice to assign a keyword to those clips I'm about to import instead of finding the clips afterwards to assign the keywords. There are a few features missing from the iPad version of Final Cut Pro. The first one is stabilization. Now, this is one feature that I think they will have in, the f in future versions, but I wish it was there from the start. Now, most of my shots don't require any post-stabilization, but occasionally I sh I I'm shooting handheld, especially on my iPhone for some B-roll shots. Now, the next feature that's not there is object tracking. Now, this is a feature that I don't use too often, but there have been times in the past couple videos I've been editing where I wish it was there. Now, this is a feature where I'm not sure when they will implement, but I think they can come up with some very intuitive way to do it, especially using the Apple Pencil. Then the last big thing I think Apple will eventually add in and put in is the use of third-party plugins. Now, the reason why I say that I'm editing almost all my videos on the iPad and not all is because recently a company reached out to me to review their software that has a Final Cut Pro plugin only on the desktop. Now they do have an iPad app, but it's not integrated directly into Final Cut Pro. Now once Apple opens up third-party plugins, this is going to make the, my experience even better. And this has been the theme with my experience using Final Cut Pro on the iPad. It's been great and it's only going to get better. Now some of the quirks I talked about, I think they are relatively easy to fix or implement. As far as workflow is concerned, I continue to change and evolve my way of doing things and has been working out beautifully. Now, I didn't mention the ability to export projects from the iPad to the desktop because I really haven't had the need to use it. The only time I did was to just really test it out. 
I do think it would be cool to have the ability to go from the desktop version to the iPad version, but I think they would have to have all the features from the desktop version implemented on the iPad. Overall, this version of Final Cut Pro has been per a perfect fit for me and for creators like me. I'm the type of creator that doesn't go crazy on their timelines, and I'm always looking for something that will allow me to work more efficiently and that is more portable. Have you tried out the iPad version of Final Cut Pro? How's your experience been? If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.